What's good, YouTube? It's your boy DRIV. Hey, today we got another special video. Today we're going to be reacting to 10 WWE matches that should have been stopped. Some really bad bloody matches. Some matches where injuries were just too much for the viewers to handle. As JR like to say, it looks like there's been a wreck out here. A car crash. Somebody stopped this match. You know how JR was, Jim Ross. Well, look, first time coming across channel, make sure I gotta hit that thumbs up. Make sure y'all subscribe because your boy is almost at 5K. What is that? Your boy is almost at 5K. And um, once I hit 5K, I will be stepping foot in the actual ring, doing some training, taking some bumps, jumping off some ropes, doing some flips, taking some chops, all that kind of stuff. So make sure y'all go ahead and tap in if y'all want to see your boy go through it, any of that kind of training. But look, without further ado, let's get into this video. It's tradition in wrestling that wrestlers push through injuries in order to finish a match and send the fans home happy. However, when some of the injuries that have occurred during WWE's top matches are analyzed, a ton of questions are asked as to just why the match was allowed to continue. Whilst it's courageous that the wrestler worked through these injuries, at the end of the day, their well-being should always be WWE's number one priority, and it's hard to argue against the argument that these 10 matches should have been brought to a definitive conclusion. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE matches that should have been stopped. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification site. Wreck is one of the worst injuries. Wait, 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 what? 10, Maven vs. Christian. Christian. Who is Maven? Wreck is one of the worst injuries a pro wrestler can suffer. And when Maven suffered one in a match against Christian on SmackDown in 2002, WWE made the call to continue the matchup. Maven would discuss the match and injury on his acclaimed YouTube series. And oh, that, oh, that's this dude. I've seen this dude's channel a couple of times on my... um. My recommendations i've seen his videos a couple of times on my recommendations i think i watched like one or two and he was just talking about um what was he talking about i forgot what video it was but yeah i didn't know wow okay cool channel you know new? to say that makes me cringe the move is called a baseball slide now i play baseball for probably the better part of 17 years of my life so the oh my that gosh, I on a baseball slide that's god proving he has a sense of humor when you mess an ankle up, what you're doing in essence, what's going to hurt you and that I still feel my ankle still swollen to this day. You're tearing up a ton of ligaments, a ton of tendons. But I don't look like it hurt, bruh. Bone breaks will heal in probably six to ten weeks. That's not the issue. The ligaments and tendons of the ankle, depending on how much you tore those up, that's going to be the true injury and that's going to decide how long you're sidelined for. Even when that mess looked like it hurt so much. In the match, as a wrestling veteran was constantly checking on him, making sure he was okay. He's not putting any pressure on my neck there, but he's asking me, how hurt are you? Can you continue? Do we need to throw up an X? But I tell him I can finish. Knowing Vince McMahon is sitting back in Gorilla right behind the curtain, there's no way in hell I'm not going to finish this match. Number 9, Triple H and Stone Cold Steve Austin vs Chris Benoit and Chris it's Jericho. Cool. The Triple H has made a career out of working through injuries. In 2001, the game was arguably on the run of his career as he was in the midst of a top heel tag team with Stone Cold Steve Austin and the two would face the duo of Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho on Raw. I ain't gonna lie, this is a pretty tough little, little, little match. Pretty tough little match right here if you ask me. I kind of like this little, this little lineup. During the match, which is widely regarded as one if not the greatest match in the history of Raw, the game tore his quad. Without question, the match should have been stopped or at least Triple H should have been taken away for medical attention. Of course, Triple H pushed through the injury and somehow, someway managed to finish the match as originally planned. A similar situation would occur in 2007 when the game tore his quad in a tag match and yet again, the WWE legend continued wrestling without a hitch. Number 8, TLC4. Thanks to That's tough, man, because I know for sure 90% of all of us watching would not be able to do that. Me personally, I know I wouldn't. I would. I would. I, I try, but I'll just be like, yeah, no. Throw the X up. Take me to the back, bro. I can't do it. Like, yeah, I know the fans are here to see this. It's probably the main event match. They came, they waited all day to see this match. But if it's that bad and that much pain going through, bro. Ain't do it. I'm sorry. Y'all just gonna have to. Hey, somebody gotta carry me out of there. The new research over the past decade in relation to concussions, WWE thankfully takes him seriously. And if a wrestler is seriously concussed, that was crazy. In ring action. Yeah, that was crazy. TLC4 in 2002. Oh, I've seen this. Suffered a serious concussion when he was bulldogged off a ladder mm -hmm. by Chris Jericho. 
The concussion was so substantial that Bubba didn't have a clue where he was and Jericho had to literally talk him through each step of the match. If this type of situation occurred in modern day WWE, then Bubba would have been pulled out of the match with immediate effect. You wouldn't even know. Thankfully, Jericho's professionalism and ability was on full display as without his guidance, Bubba could have seriously hurt himself. But I watched that whole match multiple times and you wouldn't even you wouldn't even know he had a concussion. Like, yeah, he would be yeah, he's hurt. But you would not know he had a concussion. I didn't know he had a concussion during that match. That bulldog did look like it hurt. Like I said, I did watch the match. He went face first into the canvas, but that's crazy. I didn't know he had a concussion. Number seven, Kurt Angle versus Shane McMahon. Oh my McMahon. gosh, this one. Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle collided in one of the most brutal street fight matches imaginable at the 2001 King yeah. Ring event. The match was supposed to see Angle suplex McMahon through a panel of glass. So it was this very was bad. intended to be sugar glass, but someone made a huge mistake and accidentally placed plexiglass in the panels. Due to this, McMahon they got fired a bit. And due to the horrors of what was unfolding, Vince McMahon himself was getting ready to cancel the match as he was utterly appalled in terms of what he was seeing. Number six, The Undertaker vs. Goldberg. That's the same McMahon. The Undertaker vs. Goldberg match at Super Showdown 2019, there was obvious concern that the match was going to be less than stellar. Both men, despite being absolute legends, were way past their respective prime, and for the match to work, it was going to need to be brief and to the point. Unfortunately, Goldberg reportedly knocked himself out during the match, and the match fell apart. The moment that the referee realized that Goldberg was knocked out, the match should have been brought to a close, yeah. as what followed made for rather uncomfortable viewing. The match turned into a total botch fest, and it was a miracle that both men came out of the match alive, as it were dropped on their heads numerous times throughout the oh match. Oh my gosh, he actually dropped him on his head with that tombstone too. Usually Undertaker holds people up, they have, usually have about this much space from their head to the mat, but his head... Why am I getting all these notifications all of a sudden? Anyway, he usually doesn't make their his uh, opponent. That threw me off. His opponent usually doesn't hit their head at all. At the match alive, as it were dropped on their heads numerous times throughout the match. According to Goldberg on Twitter, even though he was knocked out, he believed he could finish the match. Knocked myself out and thought I could finish. Love my fans, but let you down. Everyone else that found pleasure, hope you're happy. Both men have spoken about their regrets when it comes to that match, and thankfully WWE would learn their lesson, as following the match, they would only pair the two wrestlers with talents who were in a position to carry them through a passable, and more importantly, safe matchup. Number 5, Eddie Guerrero vs JBL Oh my Down god, this one was bad. ...presented one of the bloodiest matches in their history, as Eddie Guerrero defended the... I just did a video, like, Monday, about a lot of the matches that are in this. I, I forgot the name of it. Anyway, it had this match in it, it had the Shane match in it, and it had another match in it. Sorry I had to spoil it, but I didn't tell you how to order, so just go watch and you can figure it out. WWE title against JBL at the Judgment Day pay-per-view. This was the infamous match in which Guerrero delivered one of the scariest blade jobs ever, as he bladed too deep and the process, and in the process he sliced a major artery. The bloodshed on display was like nothing seen before in WWE programming, as it was everywhere. Although it was memorable, it was arguably too much, and Guerrero was losing blood at a terrifying rate, and he needed immediate medical assistance. Number 4, The Rock vs. Kurt Angle vs. Triple H The SummerSlam 2000 was main evented by a WWE title match between The Rock, Kurt Angle, and Triple H. The match is infamous for a dreaded injury that occurred to Angle during the match, and that should have brought Angle's involvement in the match to a definitive end. Is this the one he caught a concussion? Triple H performed a pedigree onto Angle through the announce table, yep. And the issue was that the table gave way, meaning that Angle's head hit the concrete. Angle was knocked sent. No, no. Russell Amia, if you're going to tell it, tell it right. Triple H himself, I don't know if y'all seen the video, he said Kurt Angle's head hit the monitor right here. It's behind my, my chair. He said his head hit the monitor and it knocked him out and he literally heard him snoring. So right here, as you can see, he's trying to wake him up. So during the whole match, he had to carry him through the rest of the match because Kurt Angle was knocked out. Senseless, and despite WWE delivering a scripted spot where Angle would head to the backstage area, he somehow managed to come back out and finish the match. The head of WWE creative Triple H even admitted that none of this should have occurred during an interview on Logan Paul's podcast. Now this is where the story gets terrible because now we know about the concussions and everything else. None of this should have ever happened, but we didn't know this at the time. But you know, Kurt goes into the back. Rock and I are just working now. 
At some point, we're getting feedback from the back through the referee, and finally, it was El Hebner. I just tell El, El, do not tell me one thing. But a lot of expletives in here. They said from the back, I don't give a shit. I need one thing. Tell me if he's coming back, if he knows where he is. That's it. That's all I need to know, and tell me when. We'll just keep going until someone tells me he can come out or he ain't coming out. I'll figure out a finish. Number three, the Undertaker wow. versus Mankind. Every yeah, this Mankind should be number one. This should be number being one. Being thrown off the Hell in a Cell by the Undertaker. But upon further inspection, it's clear that the match should have ended right there. The bump itself is so famous that if WWE stopped the match right there due to legitimate safety concerns for Mankind, it's likely that WWE would avoid the backlash. If the match had stopped, then Mankind would have avoided one of the scariest and unscripted spots in company history. When Taker chokeslammed Mankind through the cell, the roof was never supposed to give in, and according to Mankind, the bump was so dangerous that he could have died. Yeah. Number 2 Survivor Series 2002 Elimination Chamber The 2002 Survivor Series featured the first ever Elimination Chamber, and Triple H suffered a major injury in the oh match that led him to being rushed to hospital. One of the most famous spots in the match saw Rob Van Dam perform a 5 star frog mm -hmm. splash from the top of the chamber pod onto Triple H. The move unfortunately didn't go to plan as RVD Shin came across the game's throat. The way Triple H sold a move wasn't a case of him acting. That was legitimate, genuine pain that the game was in. According to Triple H. Friend, to think about it. Oh, he's about to talk about Triple H, and I'm sorry I keep pausing it. Like I said, I reacted to a video on Monday about some of this. This was in it too. Bruh. I didn't even know that he hit him in the throat. You can see it in slow motion, or if you go back and actually look at it again, I'm going to go back. You can actually see he hit him in the throat. And I didn't know he hit him in the throat until I seen that video. Five star frog splash from the top of the chamber pod onto Triple H. Straight in his throat, the bruh. Unfortunately, didn't go to plan as RVD Shin came across the game's nah. throat. <laughs> the way Triple H sold a move wasn't a case of him acting. That was legitimate, genuine pain that the game was in. According to Triple H, he was struggling to breathe and there was concern that he could have died in the matchup. The match should have come to a close that the game could be checked over. And WWE with the talents that do tough, bro. come up with a brand new improvised finish. And number one, Brock Lesnar vs. The Undertaker. When WWE arrived at WrestleMania... Is this worthy? I think this should be number two. I think this should be number two and then Mankind should be number one. That's what I think. 30, it was an exception that The Undertaker would have an all-time classic. Yes, I understand Undertaker could have died, but also Mankind could have died too, and Mankind's was worse. This man got thrown off the sale twice. So, I don't know. It's tough. It's a toss-up, but I think Mankind should be number one, and this one should be number two. At WrestleMania. However, at that WrestleMania, Father Time began to catch up with the dead man. Early on in the match with Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker suffered a concussion and this wasn't obvious from initial viewing as it looked like the dead man was selling but the concussion was severe. During an appearance on Broken Skull Sessions, the dead man discussed just how serious the concussion was. Somewhere within the first 5 minutes, I get concussed. I don't even remember this night. I watch it back now and obviously no. My last memory that I can definitively tell you happened at about 3.13 in the afternoon when my wife came backstage and we had a conversation. That's the last thing I remember on my show about that day. At this point in my career, there's a huge process of me getting ready between the stretching, visiting the doctors, doing everything I need to get myself ready to perform. An hour and a half, two hour process that's completely gone. My memory picks up 4.35 in the morning when I'm in hospital. Wow. While The Undertaker's injury in the match did lead to questions relating why WWE didn't stop the match, it later surfaced that when the dead man appeared on the Joe Rogan experience, that he went into the match with a broken neck. Meaning that if WWE delivered effective medical testing on the dead man, then he wouldn't have been cleared for the match. They, the doctors, take me back. My wife, Michelle McCool, and Vince McMahon are there in the waiting room. They come out, it's the same kind of deal. The doctors go, alright, he's broken his neck and we're going to give him another scan. What? Obviously, my wife is completely freaking out at this point. We come to find out they had read the scans wrong. I was about to say, bro. That I never knew I had. I never knew it. I never knew it. They have wow. Post That's crazy. I was about to say, but there's no way he broke his neck in that match. Like, no. But I still got to put that at number two because that man can't be thrown off the cell twice and literally having the tooth come through his lip, out his nose. Like, no. That's number one, bro. Well, look, let me know y'all comments. Let me know what y'all think, bro. Let me know in the comments, bro. I said that all backwards. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. 
I do read the comments. I do respond. If y'all want me to write to something in particular, let me know down below. But hey, you like this video, subscribe if you're new. It's your boy D River, man. I'm out.